one other thing that, that, that I'd written down that I'm, I'm curious if you've, that I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've thought about this is, have you found any sort of, uh, sort of like quick and easy happiness hacks for your life? Like things that, uh, surprised you in terms of, oh, this thing surprisingly makes me more happy and it's actually not that much, that effortful and more people should do this thing. Ah, uh, yeah, I have a bunch. Um, the, the, the first one is tracking your happiness is super important um, because if you don't track it, then of course you cannot do an experiment and see if it in fact makes you happier. I think people think they kind of can, but they totally can't. It's, it's very hard to know how happy you are day to day. You tend to think whatever you're feeling at that minute is how you felt for a really long time. And then you look at that and you're like, wait a second, I'm feeling yeah. bad right now, but I felt great all this week. So it's like the first step. Like if you're tracking, how, I, I track my happiness track every day. Happy? Yeah. So, uh, my daily tracking routine looks something like. Uh, I have a, a happiness score, I have a productivity score, and then I have some hypothesis that I'm testing. Uh, mm. So maybe I'm testing, uh, I don't know, waking up earlier in the morning or something like yeah. this, and I wanna see what does it do. So I'll, I'll uh, do that, and I, I actually tend to do like a one week experiment, and then if it works, I'll, I'll do it later in a one month experiment and see if it works on a longer time span. Um, and if kind of the, the results are looking good, and it's not statistically significant because you're not getting enough data points, you know, you're getting like seven versus seven, and then yeah. you're getting like 30 versus 30 or something like this. But if it, if it, if it looks like it's having positive effects uh, on those kind of numbers, the productivity or happiness number, uh, that's a kind of positive indicator. And I would say some things are like pretty surprising. Like I've had friends who've done this and found like quite weird things like, oh, I need socialization first thing in the morning. Or, oh, it really makes a difference if I sleep nine hours instead of eight. Like, that's one thing I found. I'm a long sleeper. I hate being a long sleeper. I'd get so much more done if I didn't sleep a long time. But mm -hmm. my happiness and productivity and creativity tank um, if I don't get really large numbers of hours of sleep. And that's, like, a good thing to know. Again, better to be aware than unaware and just, like, kind of chronically tired all the time. So, yeah, me measuring uh, that sort of thing. I'm sorry. And, and then on, on, on that note, what is your, like, what's a zero and what's a 10 on your happiness scale, for example? Like, how do you know? what number you're at yeah i'm one of those irritating people that like never puts a 10 ever almost um yeah. so uh, i'll tell you a 10 when i when i figure it out um but <laughs> some, something along the lines of like the best day i've ever had and, and the, the the worst day i've ever had or maybe maybe i wouldn't even put a one for the worst day i've ever had but the worst day that's like conceivably reasonable to imagine okay. in practice i would say my ratings tend to fluctuate between like a five and a nine um, so I don't end up putting like very, very, very low ratings or very, very high ratings. Probably I should like uh, dynamic range that out a little bit um, uh, to get uh, kind of more uh, nuance. But I, I find that that tends to work well enough and I just put decimal places if I have to. Okay. And do you just decide at the end of the day, like how happy generally was I today? Or do you fulfill like the Edinburgh questionnaire or whatever? Like, what's your method for this? Yeah, it's Slacker, Slacker method, just one number at the end of the day. Um, I do try to do like a quick day recreation uh, idea because uh, that, that helps you be a little bit like, what happened today? This, 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 mm. this. Okay. Yeah, I think this was my average happiness rating. Um, I think you can get more precision, but depending on what level of experiments you're doing, like day-to-day -day precision is, is pretty useful. Um, and I'm not experimenting with things that are like done in an hour very often. It's normally over days and weeks and that sort of thing. Cool. Um, so that, that's one happiness thing. Sec uh, second happiness hack, once you've measured stuff, what, once you're measuring stuff, things that will come up for almost everybody, uh, people chronically undervalue friendship. Um, mm. Time spent with friends is like ridiculously predictive and uh, uh, people just people just don't don't do it right like mm -hmm. you hear people moving to a different city for jobs all the time you hear people moving to a different city for romantic partners all the time you almost never hear of someone moving for a friend group um from a happiness perspective that friend group is like more important than the job or the, the romantic relationship so i think in general prioritizing friends uh valuing friendship making time for it that sort of thing uh super super valuable um i uh yeah, when I think about cities, so obviously I think about cities mostly from a helpfulness perspective, what's, where's charity entrepreneurship be the best. But when I think of it from a personal perspective, it is all about the people. Uh, almost everything else is like a rounding error. Like, okay, London's water is kind of crappy, Vancouver's water is kind of good, who cares? Um, it, it's mostly about the, the, the quality of social interactions that, that you can get there. So I think that is super neglected by people. Um, Learning some sort of stoicism and some sort of like letting go type techniques, uh, I think are very, very valuable. And I think people sometimes put this on like a false dichotomy where it's like you're either like perfectly stoic or you're, you're, you're normal. And I think just moving yourself a little bit up on the spectrum so you can just uh, let go of some things, uh, that can be very, very useful. Um, yeah, I'm looking at my, my happiness pillars that I came up with. So I actually have nine pillars of, of sub goals that, that relate to my happiness. Friends we talked about, letting go we talked about, partnering with best friend we talked about. That's one of my; those are my three in social relations. 
uh, focusing on experience, lots of uh, evidence suggesting this. So creating some sort of novelty in your life. And this is funny from a guy who structures his meals the same every single week, but I don't create novelty in food. I create novelty in experience. So I try to do one thing that's kind of like novel every, every Sunday or something like that. Uh, creating calm, creating flow, both those are, are really good if you have uh, little interjections of them uh, throughout the day. Uh, and then attitude. So optimism, anti-fragility, and uh, cultivating 90-10 on most goals uh, are all things that I think correlate quite nicely to this uh, attitudinal benefit and, and creating more happiness. Sorry, and 90-10 uh, meaning you'll do it 90% of the time, you'll forget about it 10% of the time? Uh, basically, uh, being that, uh, the, that I'm setting more things to satisfy some goals. Um, so... Uh, not trying to maximize health, just trying to be like, yeah, this is good enough for, for health and, and that sort of thing. Uh, that does tend to be a good strategy for happiness is more satisfying goals, less maximizing ones. It sounds like you've really got it all figured out. Does it, does it, feel, that, does it feel that way <laughs> internally for you? Uh, I mean, so there's a very big difference between having this all on a Google Doc and consistently exactly, implementing exactly, this. Yeah, yeah. So I have it color-coded um, <laughs> for how well I'm doing on each of these goals, right? So, uh, you know, uh, I'm in a really good relationship, so that that, that partner's one uh, might be like green. Uh, but friends, you're some of five closest contacts. Prioritize them. I haven't like done a great job on that, um, so that's that's like a red red bar. Uh, I've only been okay on that. So Wait, I would say, are, you, are, are, you, are, you, are you sort of implicitly shitting on your friends right now? <laughs> no, it's it's some some of this to do with circumstance. Okay. So I did move to from Vancouver to London, so I, I lost a bunch oh, of social see. context yeah, yeah, there, yeah. and then of course London had the pandemic. So yeah, it's hard. Some of this is like out of my control. Okay. Um, but but some of this is just um, I've just been busy, so it's been it's been hard to, to find the time to, to do as much friendship prioritization as, as I would like to do. I think if I was an optimal agent, I would do a little bit more of that. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I mean, look, what are these? I probably have like a third in green, a third in yellow, and a third in red. So okay. I'm not I'm not maximizing all these goals. Some are easier than others. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's easier to sleep the right amount of hours than it is to exercise the exact amount that I want. You know, so some some goals are are easier than others. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I wonder, wonder what, what, which one of these ones I've forgotten a lot. Um, I think one thing that I've changed my values on quite a bit is the important of the importance of cultivating atmospheres. So I used to think atmospheres are kind of silly. Like I, I'm sure I can just be happy at any place mm. or be calm at any place, and 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 that mm. sort of thing. And then I thought, okay, why am I like forcing myself to, to, to be calm in a not calm room when I could buy like a $10 light bulb that makes it a lot more calm? So I think sometimes uh, sometimes you want to work with your irrationality if it's easier to kind of like solve the environment than solve your, your mental thing. So mm. for instance, with creating calm, uh, creating calm space, I have a nice little place that's like lit by soft orange fairy lights and, and kind of like uh, immediately activates like a calming mentality and uh, that sort of thing. So I think sometimes people don't, like maybe it seems a little bit cheesy or something to like theme a room or theme a corner in a certain way. But I think if it cultivates an attitude in yourself that you want to cultivate more, uh, that that's often worth the, the investment. Yeah, this this is something that I, I, I sort of really side noticing as well. Because I think, I think like I'm just inherently very sensitive to how things are designed and kind of the, the sort of you know, aesthetic beauty around me. And I think it's, you know, I think it's kind of stupid. And so I'll be like, well, no, I, sh I should be able to be like perfectly productive, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sitting on the sofa <laughs> in a messy room versus, you know, or whatever. But like, it just makes such a huge difference that, yeah, now I'm, I'm much more happy to give into it and say, okay, look, I, I, I need a nice place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's, it's about which one's easier to, to change, yeah, yeah. right? So <laughs> I don't know. If you're frustrated that the sun's in the sky, like that's a pretty difficult thing to change. You're probably going to have to change your own brain on that. If you're frustrated that like your your light is really white and makes everything look kind of bad, like yeah. that's actually pretty easy to change. Um, you should probably just change the light bulb. <laughs> yeah. 